the fatted calf. Prodigal son has returned. When the curtain goes up on the sun, this man has already lost two families. He knows there's only so much muscle on the bone of trying to stay alive. And there's bigger men knocking at his door. At the end of season one, the McCullough family crossed the line. Come with me, son. We have a dark curse on us for what we did. That's where we left things for the new story to take over. Daddy. Where we find Pete at the beginning of the season is being taken back to where he's run away from and being forced to face his family and try and exist with these people whose integrity he's questioned since the beginning. Go on, son. Give your wife a kiss. Sally does not particularly want Pete back because he left over the border with another woman. She knows that he was unfaithful to her and she's being forced to accept Pete back because it's good optics for the family business, but she's looking for something this season for herself. She's stuck back at the ranch where she's never really liked being, where she doesn't have any friends. So she drinks more, she says what she thinks, and she says it bluntly. Were there any Mexican bandits there at all? Or did you just kill women, children, and servants? It's a hard world, Sal. There's a sense of malevolence constantly throughout the pieces with the characters, characters who are trying to define themselves. And then there's the, the interlopers, the intruders, the ones that are coming for the family. And you realize the fragility of Eli in particular. Do you know about his plans for the oil business long term? What do you think comes up with those plans? Writes them down and makes them happen. Phineas has moved the McCullough family into what he believes is their correct destiny, which is to keep the legacy of the family going. And he has pushed them into a position that they can't really get out of. Where are we going? Up to see the colonel. He wants to take you out on the job. Oh, I, I ain't ready. In case you haven't noticed, the only way back in is through him. So come on. When Pete decides that being with his children is important enough for him to accept the horror of being Eli McCullough's son, he finds himself really torn in two different directions. And it gets complicated by Maria Garcia coming back slightly unhinged in a really wonderful, dramatic way. Her only motive is just to rip Eli McCullough from everything that he has. She has nothing to lose, so she becomes his number one enemy. In the 19th century storyline, in season two, Eli has basically assumed a position of leadership and responsibility with the Comanches at exactly the time where the Titanic has hit the iceberg. There's not enough of us to survive on our own. We need to find another band of Comanches. He's really learning what it means to be a Comanche and, and their ways and adapting to them. He definitely has more responsibility and just a lot more riding on his shoulders now. And he definitely realizes that. This family is going in a new kind of direction. And we both know it's not cows. What really excites me about this second season is that it's a group of characters that have been through so much together. And now they are forced to face the consequences of what happened in season one together. You want to see the next world? I think this season, it's more action-filled and the tension is like 10 times higher than it was last season. A lot more excitement, a lot more adrenaline in 1852. Nothing brings a family together like a declaration of war. Something like that.